Greetings, welcome back to Switch to Linux. You got extra kitty cam today. For whatever reason, right when I pushed the stream, Chromium decided to crash. Oh well. Uh, but anyway, we just got that reset. I think we're good now. Uh, I just tried to type in meow and then that was it. Right, kitty? Tried to type meow and he was done. He's just like, whatever. All right, so greetings. Uh, Brennan, how's it going there? Uh, Richard Addison, hello there. Uh, okay, perfect time video. Looking for Debian, but the PC uses NVIDIA and Ubuntu and to make it easier to install drivers. Yes, that is definitely a major advantage to using Mint and Ubuntu is it is way easier to install the drivers. Um, it's not super hard to install the, your other drivers, but it will take some terminal work. And that's why I love Debian, but I don't necessarily recommend it for new users. Um, and Mark Yates, greetings then. <clears throat> Already then, impromptu stream. I said yesterday on the stream that I was gonna do it about noon today. <laughs> All right, so we're going to continue in our story on Debian, and then uh, I'm not sure what else we'll do. Um, we'll hang out for as long as we want to hang out, but uh, then we'll see what's going to go on from there. So um, since I don't have the uh, guest editions installed, we'll just go ahead and use this view of the system. So what we want to do is, um, first I want to show you what the audio issue happens to be. So. Um, here we can have our audio settings, and um, the problem is is that some applications have full access to the master control volume and will max out the max out the volume. So to show you what I'm talking about, um, I'm going to boot up Synaptic, and we're going to install Kodi because that is one of the applications that that tends to do it. All right, uh, we're going to close that out, and we're going to install Kodi. mark that for installation and we will go ahead and apply all right and we're not going to cancel mm, let me move my distro around so i can actually see the comments greetings buddy tube how's it going there all right um running the package blah 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 making changes blah 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 and my experience of the volume issue, some browsers, like I think, I think Conqueror browser um, and maybe Chromium, when you change videos or even when an ad would pop up in a video, it would automatically reset the volume to maximum. So uh, take note where the volume is, not quite there. And when I hit Cody to launch this, it should launch the volume in maximum. And I did see it go back to maximum. So you can actually toggle between the full screen and the windowed mode by hitting the dash icon here in uh, when you're in Kodi. So you can do that. So you can now have a windowed version of Kodi. Now notice that your volume maxed itself out, which is a little bit on the annoying side. So uh, let's just go ahead and exit Kodi. And now, of course, I'd have to readjust my volume. So a lot of different things will mess with the volume. The reason is there is a setting in Debian that is a little bit different. And uh, what you actually will need to do is adjust your configuration files for your audio. So um, I'm going to boot up a terminal here. So booting up your terminal, um, where we want to go is we want to go into Etsy. All right, so you'll see inside Etsy we have a directory. Um, let's see, let me make this bigger and increase. Can I increase the size of this? Should be able to increase the size of this. All right, um, so what we need to adjust in here is we need to go in and adjust our uh, pulse. So we're going to CD into pulse. Okay, and then what we have in here is we have client, we have daemon, we have default, we have system. We want to edit the daemon.config file. So we're going to do sudo nano 
and daemon.config. So of course, if you just type in the first couple letters and hit tab, it will autofill whatever's there. We want the password for Debian. And then now we have this file here. So this is part of Pulse Audio. The culprit for this is down here and is called flat volume. So you want to, first the semicolon is a, uh, this is a comment file, which means anything after it will not appear. So we need to get rid of that and we need to write yeah, um, no on flat volumes. Hit X and uh, control X, Y to save it as this, uh, to save it, hit enter to save it as the same file. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reboot the machine. So we're just going to do sudo reboot, way easier. Um, and then what that should allow us to do then is that should uh, boot us back in and the volume should now work. Of course, this is like taking your car to the mechanic. So since I'm showing you on a live stream, it won't work. But, you know, that's how you fix it on your system. All right. Let's go ahead and log back into our Debian machine. Okay. So now we'll get our volume adjusted where we want our volume adjusted. Let's go ahead and load up Cody again. Okay, so now it's loading in Cody, but notice now that the volume issue is fixed. So that's how to fix the volume issue. All right, now as far as your drivers, um, your drivers, this is where it can get complicated and why Debian is a little bit more difficult to get your drivers working. And that's that you need to, the first thing you need to do is you need to just go in and add the ability for Debian to find your contributors and your non-free drivers. And then the downside is you have to kind of know what driver you're looking for. Pretty much any hardware at all, type in Debian, non-free, enter your hardware name and you will find the driver name that you need. But the first step that is common everywhere is you need to enable the non-free driver sources. All right, so what we're gonna do is once again, we will boot up a terminal and the driver sources is inside of our Etsy again. And we are inside of apt. And now we have all of these sources list. So what we need to change is we need to change your, um, need to change it in your sources list. So this one here. So we're going to once again do sudo because this is a system file. We have to do it as root. Now again, um, in Debian, you uh, if you set it up with a root password, you will have to log into your main user and log in as root to in order to do this. What we did in our install is we left the sudo password blank, which disables the root account, but then it makes your first user a sudo group user. That's why we can do this. If you have missed that step and you have a root user, then that's a different process. You just need to go in and add your main user name to the, uh, to the sudo group. All right, so we're going to do sudo nano and we can't uh, I guess we can tab on that one um, we'll hit our sources list of course we have to hit enter our pseudo password which I typed it wrong <laughs> there we are and so now all we need to do is just go after each of these and type in non free and contrib now you you can do is you can copy text make it a little bit easier. Um, just make sure that as you are uh, doing that, you are doing it correctly. Okay. No. Hitting too many extra letters. All right, so there's the first step. So the next step is you wanna do a sudo apt update. So now it's going to be doing updates for the non-free drivers and for anything else. So if you wanted to install, for example, 
um, uh, an AMD ATI card. That's what I have to do on... Um, I don't have to do it... Uh, I don't know. I might have to do it on this computer. I do actually have to do that on my media p PC, which is currently running Debian Cinnamon, um, because it has an integrated AMD card, which doesn't play nice with the free drivers. So in order to do that, uh, like I said, you just do an internet search for what you're looking for. And uh, here is how to install it. So the first thing you want to do is... Um, uh, well, these are all the different driver names. So the first thing you want to do, particularly if you're running NVIDIA, is you want to purge the free NVIDIA drivers. Um, this is Debian 8, but it works the same way on Debian 9. Um, here's where we add our contrib on our non-free after, uh, uh, after each of our uh, sources. We want to update, and then here is specifically the drivers related to this particular video system. So uh, that is that. You need to look up your individual piece of software uh, in order to figure that part out. Of course, um, uh, Pulse Audio, well, this is Realtek drivers. So, of course, here is our Realtek drivers. We need to make our adjustment. We're going to update and then install firmware related to Realtek. So you just need to do a little bit of internet search some sleuth searching around to figure out where are the drivers that you need. First step is always the same, add contrib and non-free to each of your sources list and then update the system. So that's actually all you need to do to, to make that part work. <clears throat> all right, let's see. What other questions do we have on Debian while well, we are here? Hello, PCTLC. Is that... Personal computer, tender, loving care. Greetings. Uh, hello, Keegan. How's it going there? Okay. World of Linux. Greetings, Steven Anderson. Good evening, Mr. Anderson. I almost bought a copy of Matrix from Goodwill the other day, but there were a few other movies there that I wanted instead. So, And there's piles of Matrix copies over there, so I'll get one another day. It is possible to install apt dpackage to install Debian package. Oh, is it possible? I actually believe that that is already pre-configured. Let me um, let me look into that though. Um, one application that I know you will not find in the repos for Debian is Skype, but they make a deb file available. Um, of course, why am I grabbing it from here? I would need to do that from inside my machine. Uh, no. Okay, so let me go ahead and boot this up. Let's just go ahead and test this. I, I think this works out of the box on Debian, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'll come over here. Let's do Skype Debian. Da, ah, I'm on Google. Ew. Ew, ew, ew. Okay, duck, duck, go. There's a, there's a decent choice. Sheesh. You'd think Microsoft would figure out, um, you'd think Microsoft would figure out SEO, right? I'd imagine that Skype would be on the top if I type in Skype and related to anything. Um, downloads. So here we want to grab our deb package uh, because this is Debian. Let's go ahead and save the file. Okay, so there's that. That should have downloaded into the downloads folder by default. Double click it and it goes right into our .deb package installer. Give it a second and that should give us the ability to install Skype. Okay, we need to enter our password. Now it's grabbing what it needs. Close that automatically. All right, installation is complete. So now under my internet menu, I should see Skype. 
So yes, dot deb functionality is working perfectly, being as it is dot deb. Hey, look, Microsoft installed unicorn poop on my desktop. Look at that. All right. Uh, so that's how you do that, Deep Martana. Does that uh, help you out? All right, Keegan, greetings. Yeah, there's the package I. There's there's that as well. I'm I'm trying to show things through the GUI for newer users, but yeah, that's also you can do that. Okay, Nvidia issue I'm having is much weirder because technically the open source Novo uh, Nvidia drivers works better than the propriety, but Windows is not working well on the other computer. Ah. <laughs> Boom, got a live stream. Hello Alice, how's it going? It's possible to install apt dpackage to install Linux. Uh in Manjaro. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know enough about the Arch world. If there's any Arch users that can answer that, please do so. Um, or provide a link. Uh, let's see. It's weird. So I'm still installing Windows. Figure out if the graphics card works or not on the system. Also put extra cooling just to make sure. Still installing Windows. See, this is the problem with Windows. It just takes forever to install. My land. Possible to install dpackage from, from our choose repository. Thank you. Appreciate that. Your BSD router failed yet by hugging? It hasn't failed yet by hugging. Um, there's a couple times I've had to reset it, but it hasn't failed by hugging. Uh, where did the cap come from? Is it custom made? No, it came from the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon. Uh, that Google reaction always happens to me when installing a new distro. <laughs> yeah, some distros, like, I think Linux Mint uses Yahoo now by default. Ew. Um, or do they, I forget. I think they're using Yahoo now. They had a deal with Google that fell through, so they switched to Yahoo. Okay, not really. Can you get original source and make a compatible package? Yeah, I'm not I'm not much of an arch guy as well. Okay, Alice, I go ahead and made you a mod, so go ahead and pass that uh, uh, pass that link on if you may. Let's see what else do I like to do in Debian? Um, you know, this is one of the things somebody had uh, somebody had commented on the other day about. Um, uh, can you run a minimal install? In reality, Debian doesn't come with a ton of different stuff, but it does come with enough extra stuff that drives me crazy. Like, I'm actually not much into games, and so here we got all these games pre-installed, and um, we do have GIMP, Inkscape, so there actually is a lot, of, a lot of applications. So, I know there's a minimal install for a server, but I don't know if there's a minimal install for uh, Debian itself. Of course, some of the things that we have installed came with Cinnamon because what it'll do is it'll install a core base of software, uh, which will include the games package. It includes your office packages, um, Inkscape, GIMP, uh, Shotwell. Um, there's Thunderbird and didn't I also see Ice Dove? Okay. Um, which is essentially Thunderbird. Um, and we get Brasario, Rhythmbox, a lot of different things. And some people, for some people, that's too much. Pigeon, of course, some people may or may not use that. Um, I don't know of a minimal install with the desktop environment. There are some instructions, but the options that they're telling you to click are not available. So really what I do would do generally is I'll just come up here and um, uh, let's see what I'll do here is I'll just come in here and just uninstall stuff. And remember there should be a way where I can view just what is installed. Uh, status installed. So clicking status, clicking installed, and then here, of course, you don't want to just go completely crazy. But I know if I don't need Brasario, um, I'm just going to go ahead and mark. Actually, if you mark complete removal, it should take off dependencies as well. Um, uh, I know I wouldn't use cheese. <clears throat> of course, cinnamon, we need all those. Um, 
Let's do sections. Games and amusement. You can just click on the uh, sign up here to highlight everything in there. So I can just come in here and just mark stuff for complete uh, complete removal. Kind of a pain, really. Uh, and I do wish they had a minimal install. If somebody knows of one, I couldn't find one. Um, <clears throat> but this is what I would do is just go through and very easily just remove all the applications you don't need. Of course, this starts to have a Windows type feel. I remember anytime I'd install Windows, it takes about about half a day to get Windows installed and then half a day to get rid of all the bloatware crap that they put on it. All right, so now we're going to apply. It's going to remove a bunch of stuff. It's going to do its thing. All right. So now hopefully our games menu has vanished because I've obliterated all of the games. All right. <clears throat> Okay, switch back to Google. Oh, did they switch back to Google? Why don't, like, Linux Mint is so privacy focused. Why don't you use Start Page or DuckDuckGo? I mean, really. Of course, if the search engine's paying them money to have it listed, you kind of understand. <clears throat> Setting in Package Manager to turn on R, and it'll automatically build the package with it. Yep, still don't know if. You can get apt working though. Yeah, it, just because it's there doesn't mean necessarily it's working. Q4 OS. Um, it has been a long time since I've looked at Q4 OS, so I can't remember even what that's based on. My experience the package on Arch would still not find some dependencies installed on Arch even if they were there. That's that's kind of a yeah. That is kind of a downside. What is Debian names? Bluetooth with blue man. I well, I think it's for Bluetooth manager because Debian likes doing Debian likes likes making abbreviated names. Um, you know, in, in fact, its name itself is Deb Ian, which is uh, the the guy who invented it and his wife. Of course, he put his wife first because that's what you do. Uh, Ian Deb just wasn't quite as good, but Debian works nice. Uh, but you know that's what it is. Is it's um, it's it's there. It's Bluetooth Manager is why it's called Blue Man. Um, Robert Jeff, how's it going there? Uh, I have available. Uh, I have available the Intel Microcode proprietary driver. What is it? For? Or do you recommend using it? Um, okay, so that is going to allow uh, a proprietary driver for your Intel. That would usually mean you're running a um, like a core, uh, a core Intel Core processor, Core i processor. Um, I think it should allow slightly more, um, slightly more functionality. But the trade-off is that there is some potentially weird stuff going on in the microcode. If you were to get on to start page or DuckDuckGo or something, do an internet search for um, microcode, Intel microcode drivers and some controversy, there is a little bit of controversy surrounding it. So you would want to research that thoroughly and ask, is it worth having that? I generally have installed that on my systems because uh, unless it's one of my more um, security focused systems, um, security or privacy focused systems. But like when I ran this computer with an Intel processor, I'm, a, I'm on AMD on this computer now, but when I ran this as an Intel processor, um, I installed it because for me the performance boost was good. And my laptop, which does run an Intel i5, I have it installed over there because it's good. I mean, it's I don't have a problem with it. But you'd want to research it for yourself, understand that there's some controversy, and then figure out if it's worth installing for you. Um... 
But I'm not a hardware guy that knows all of the ins and outs of that. Okay, what things do you think Debian does better than Mint? And what do you think Mint does better than Debian? Um, I think what Debian does better than Mint... Um, I think... I mean, I don't know. Um, I would overall say I like Mint way better than Debian. Um, okay, Mint... Debian has a lot more desktop environments, so I like KDE. Of course, Mint dropped KDE. Debian did not. Uh, you can choose your variety of uh, your variety of desktop environments, and um, it has a long user base. It has a long, long stable track history, and is dedicated to. Um, to complete free options. So that's why the main default doesn't have the non-free and the contributor drivers in it and all those other functionalities. It's because it wants to maintain its, its, um, its uh, commitment to, to free and open source before Mint, where Mint may have a couple of closed source applications by default because its focus is to work better across more hardware. And so... That's what Debian does better is keep that commitment to the free and open source world uh, while maintaining a variety of options of installation, uh, everything from servers. Uh, and there's Debian web servers. There's not Mint-based web servers. Um, so that's what they do. As far as Mint, Mint does a better job at working out of the box on uh, any system and in even tweaking the finer th system details like drivers without having to drop to a terminal. So that's what I like Mint better for. That it just it has a much more polished feel um, and it works better out of the box most of the time. Uh, so that's kind of my thoughts on that. We can uninstall apt or depackage in Manjaro. Manjaro is based on Arch for the package you're looking for. It should be Arch repos. Okay. So we have a debate going on. All right. Just stop by to say hello. All right, Kyrie. We'll see you later. Okay. First thing I usually do is uninstall popularity contest. Uh, Debian does not have it installed by default unless you've selected to install it. Um, on Ubuntu, yes. Caution if you remove a package name, GNOME keyring. This can break all your system, removing your DE. Yes. Correct. That is baked into the GNOME system. Um, I it was a questionable death. Um, it was not necessarily. I don't recall it being a necessary confirmed suicide, but it was. It was definitely a premature death. Um, yeah, it was a little, little controversial. Who knows? Maybe, maybe the powers that be are slowly plucking off the, the, the Linux heads. I don't know. <laughs> TDF core Microsoft installer. Just kidding. But I'll fetch them from SourceForge. Well, I mean, that, uh, the reason you'd want to run this, which is the um, the uh, MS Core fonts, the reason you'd want to run that is if you are always um, interacting with people using Office, one of the core ways, um, one of the core problems with with uh, Linux systems and, and Microsoft systems is they don't share fonts. So that means if you're writing a document on uh, on LibreOffice and you send it to somebody with um, uh, utilizing Word or something on a Windows computer, then what's going to happen is the system will make a font replacement because likely the font you're using is not the font that they're using. So if you install MS Core fonts and you set up your system to use MS Core fonts by detail, but by default you'll have more compatibility if you're sending files back and forth to Windows users. And I'm planning a video on that uh, on that thread soon. Okay. Good morning, Yu-Gi-Oh! How's it going there? I'm doing well myself. Can another Arch user tell me if you can get apt working on Arch? Yeah, apparently there's some controversy. Some people saying it does, some people saying it doesn't. I don't know. Okay. And I'm gonna I'm gonna remove 
Alice from Mod now that the link's posted. All right. As far as I know, PPAs aren't enabled by default on Debian for Ubuntu. Um, PPAs are something, if I recall correctly, PPAs are something that is um, a feature of Ubuntu. So yeah, there's you don't necessarily have that PPA support. Um, there are ways you can, if I'm not mistaken, I thought you could drop that into um, into the sources file list though. I'll have to look that one up. Loving Mint 19, snappier than even 18. Cool, very good. Sudo apt install Ubuntu report. No, 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 no. Uh, morning, Frank. How are you? Okay, I had a Debian installer glitch on me once when it came to opt out. Maybe that's why PopCon was on there. Yeah, it shouldn't be on there. Let me let me see. What this goofy thing where occasionally my uh, keyboard on this doesn't want to work? There it is. Yep, popularity contest is not found. So wonder why so many people use Ubuntu. It's good and all, but they don't give a crap about user suggestion. Go for what's best for business. Well, that's why I use Mint, because they filter all that best for business crap out and go back to the main source of the user. <laughs> uh... Lido and Calderia are metric compatible with Calibri and I don't know. What are those? Carlito. I don't know, Richard. What I'm I'm unfamiliar with what you're looking at there. Okay. I think Debian Stretch does have PPA, PPA support. This Linux Mint Debian Edition is still on Debian 8. Does not support it by default. Huh. Okay. I don't know. I thought PPAs were unique to Ubuntu, but I could be wrong about that. I don't know. Is Debian unstable similar to Arch? No, it's actually quite the opposite. The reason Arch has instability is because it's always bleeding edge. Um, what they're trying to do is always have the latest software. Uh, Debian's software development moves about as fast as a glacier. Um, they'll get security updates, but what they don't do is they don't upgrade all the packages. So LibreOffice, for example, um, you know, just came out with version 6. GIMP is 2.10. Um, what you will not find on Debian probably until the next Sable release, which could be a few years out, you will not see Debian 6 or um, LibreOffice 6 or GIMP 2.10 until that next release. Whereas if you're on Arch, you already have it. Um, the, da the upside of that is you always get a chance to experiment with the latest software packages. The downside is if there's instability or something, it causes the system to break. And so... That's why I'm not a big fan of Arch because I need system stability, not the latest packages. In fact, I do not prefer my packages change because once I get used to how something works, I don't like that developers like tinkering around and changing things around. I want to have a consistent user experience. So I, I like Debian, I like Mint because they do that. That's exactly what they do. And I can always upgrade to the latest. So if I wanted the latest GIMP on this, I could put it on. It's just not there by default. So it's not going to change on me is what the point is. Um, the Arch had just about every package on demand. So install be sudo. Uh, Pacman S package name. So why would you need the package? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, some very specialized script could use it. I mean, that could be a reason, but I don't know. You're a privacy-centric user. You should 
only are disable or remove Ubuntu report, but only need to remove app port, Popcon, and Amazon. Give us your desktop tour, how you arrange the desktop, what kind of apps you prefer, blue blah, just curious. Sure, we can do that. Where's my desktop view? There's my desktop view. All right, so we are running this on Linux Mint 17.3. I'm running the, I think this is the glassy theme. Um, of course, I have my own custom switch to Linux logo as my menu icon. Uh, of course, this is my video development computer. And uh, what I'm doing over here is, you know, I just have it set up just like Windows. So throw my mouse down in the bottom corner here. I can minimize everything and show the desktop. I have a quick launch of all the things that I need on a regular basis. As far as applications, um, there's, those are pretty much default. Some of these are on here because like my cooking channel uses Gourmet. Um, I use Gourmet, I use Scribus over there for making the recipes and the, um, and the actual print uh, recipes. Like the, the recipe database is in Gourmet and the print, rest, the print things are done with Scribus. Um, graphics, um, I do Blender work every now and again, obviously lots of GIMP. I use, I don't use Inkscape a lot, but every now and again I need it, so I have it installed. Scribus, of course, I use that for, um, uh, I use that for doing PDFs. Um, I have Zoom and Telegram, should I need to communicate with anybody on those. I do keep three browsers installed. Waterfox is the primary browser. Chromium is what I use for the uh, YouTube account login. And Firefox is the default, uh, like as the is the backup browser. I'm sorry. Um, under Office, I have LibreOffice over here. And Audacity, I use Audacity for doing my podcasting stuff on the other channel. Um, Brasario, if I need to burn a CD, this is one of the two computers I have that can burn a CD. Um, Kaden Live is what I use for editing. Kid 3 is for podcasting. Uh, OBS, I just had to install OpenShot to try something else. Uh, if I just need to do a quick recorder, I'll use Simple Screen Recorder and VLC, which I should, could probably get rid of VLC. I mean, that's about it. Um, this doesn't have any applications on it that I don't need for my regular purpose. Um, and so that's that's kind of what we what we have here. So here's the system info. Uh, we're running 16 gigs DDR4 memory. We have a Ryzen 5 1600 processor. Um, and Linux Mint 18.3 Cinnamon. So that's about it on this desktop. Um, I run different desktops for different things. So that's this one. Basic commands for new users that are running Arch Linux for the very first time. I don't know enough Arch Linux to answer that. Get a weird keyboard issue again. It's just it's so intermittent. It's weird. Um, all right. Okay, so we're gonna search for. Okay, so it's a fonts package. Metric compatible with Calibri font. Carlito comes regular bold, italics bold. Family covers, okay. So it's basically, it's a font package. The, the challenge though with using a different font though is that, um, 
even if it's close, it may not match if it's not exact on a Windows computer. And that's kind of the downside. Um, and you can install Calibri um, on your Linux computer if you need to use that. That's not a big deal. Um, but I don't know. It'd be interesting to test that out, though. Which, which from Mint 19 to Peppermint 9? Probably going to go back to Mint soon. All right. Thoughts on Linux Mint should focus on the Debian version instead of relying on Ubuntu. Um, they are they are releasing another version of the Debian edition uh, very soon. As soon as 19 is officially out, they're going to release the final version of, uh, of that uh, or another version of that. But uh, I think that's probably a good idea. And I think that they're kind of seeing some of the writing on the wall um, that they're probably going to start doing a little bit more uh, focus on that in the next edition of Linux Mint Debian edition is supposed to bring compatibility to be very similar so um, I think that Linux Mint should focus more on on Debian because it is a lot um, <clears throat> is a lot more friendlier to user privacy and uh, they're not teetering with uh, they're not teetering with IPOs and any IPOs and buyouts tend to lead to changes in the system. And I think that that's, uh, that's a dangerous thing, particularly since um, Canonical has said they are either going to do an, an IPO or, you know, something else for business investment. Um, and what they are doing, they stopped focusing on Unity to focus on IoT and server technology. And that's the exact area that money hungry Microsoft is um, going into. And so it's not unreasonable that Microsoft and Canonical have had talks. Um, whether or not Shuttleworth would sell out to Microsoft is a different question. Um, but it is dangerous in that they are both driving towards compatible things. And with Microsoft's track history, um, it would not surprise me to see something like that happen. So yes, I think they should focus more on Debian at times. Is Debian in some way more lightweight than Mint? Um, it could be. I don't know. Let's see. System monitor right now. We're using one gig of memory um, over here on Debian. So that's not. Uh, now also though also we are in software rendering mode which is more intensive on the CPU. So um I don't know for sure. Let me let me look at it over here. Hold on. <clears throat> okay, so my my computer running uh, Debian Cinnamon over here, not software rendering, is running at 800 megabytes right now of RAM. So. I'd actually say they're probably about comparable with each other. Um, I'm not sure one's definitely more lightweight than the other. It's going to depend on your desktop environment. So since we're running Debian Cinnamon here, then it's going to be about the same um, than, uh, than that. Looks like my uh, background froze. Is the video frozen for you guys too, or is it just me? <laughs> Looks like the videos, my little video's frozen. That's exciting. All right. Yes, Peppermint 9 was released yesterday. I'm going to have a look at it earlier this next week coming up. Salts and Arch are generally more lightweight. Mm. Want something lightweight, you got to pick a light desktop. That's that's the fact. You know, that's the fact. Um well, Alex, you can't put links in there to prevent spammers from jumping on here and spamming live feeds with porn links. That's why. There, Alex, you can post a link. As long as it's not to something bad. <laughs> okay. You make a video of top 10 things you do when you first install Linux Mint. I thought I had a couple of those, but I can uh, maybe add some back to the list.
Okay. Is there someone using Peppermint here? Not on this computer, but I do have... I'm still running Peppermint 7, though, because it works perfectly fine. Why change? The... the well, I mean, it's this is a technically a mechanical keyboard. You mean a wired keyboard. The, the problem is, is I have too many wires on a desk as it is. And for whatever reason, it's... I don't know if it's just this particular computer that doesn't like the wireless keyboard, but um, I don't know. It's interesting. Thoughts on Microsoft is making their own Linux Azure sphere. I think Microsoft is creepy, particularly when their documentation has a picture of their IoT device going to the cow. Yes, that's right. We will have smart cows. I don't think we want smart cows in a world, do we? Um... I mean, they're, they're basically what they're kind of saying is that, hey, Linux is working better than our software, so let's use that for IoT instead. That's what I think they're doing. But People should have been using open source fonts in Windows. I See, I agree, but asking a Windows user to change their fonts for the Linux user is just an exercise in futility. How do you install a font? Um, yeah, Joy, I have a giant centipede crawling up the... Uh, wall up there. That's exciting. Hmm. Oh well, I'll get it later. Uh, first thing is pro Pac-Man. The rest of the Linux commands work everywhere pretty much. Yeah. yeah. thing Microsoft has created that I like is the launcher for Android. Can't wait for the Linux Mint Debian Edition upgrade. Yep. How are Unix and Linux different, and have you tried Unix? Is it good? Um, no, I am not. I am not a person that uses a lot of those different systems. I'm not the person to answer the question of how they are different. <clears throat> I would check system usage on HTOP, but HTOP isn't install installed. I know I could install it, but you know. This version because requirements grew, particularly in RAM. For me, it's important to keep RAM low. All right. Greetings, present arms. How's it going there? Yeah, it already happened. Made no sense. Bots are not good for advertisements anyway. Right? All right. <clears throat> yeah, so this is this is a little bit about the about the um the app port uh or the the data collection stuff on Ubuntu. And and this is funny because when um <clears throat> I think it was Quid Sub came out and uh and talked about about some of this stuff, all the guys were like, oh, he didn't give us the right commands. Well, then, guys, tell us what they are because we don't want this. We want to completely opt out. Um, I think he had it down correctly, but I don't know for certain. Um, and, yeah, so that link in there is about uh, some of the Ubuntu data collection stuff. Um, but, I don't know, well, yeah, we can dig into that. I did a uh, I did a video about that whole controversy. It was kind of funny. I, I tore apart that Jupiter Broadcasting video. All right. <clears throat> Should I upgrade to Mint 18.3? I'm worried about ending the support. Uh, what are you running now? Depends on what you're running now. See you, Alex. Smart cows and what do they do exactly? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I want a smart cow, though. You were something Ubuntu and Microsoft. What exactly is that? Um, well, I mean, I, I'm not sure which part we were talking about, but uh, what I was saying earlier is that Ubuntu and Microsoft's um, Goals are presently aligned. They are meaning they are direct competitors at this point, and that Microsoft is 
They're even ramming, ramping down Windows 10 a little bit and focusing on server and IoT, which is exactly what Canonical is doing. Uh, they're focusing more on server and IoT, and so it wouldn't surprise me to see if Microsoft uh, and Ubuntu or a Canonical have been talking about, about things, um, which is kind of scary. The PCC and install all the fonts on Windows Partition. Yep. Yep. Most of the problems related to LibreOffice document not working Windows is due mostly to the fonts. Mostly to the fonts, correct. Um, and the fact that Microsoft hates open source software and so it intentionally tries to break things. But sorry for asking again, but can you tell about it again? I think I just did that. Uh, difference is obviously the kernel. They don't use GNU, but tools but the bsd tools commands are the same syntax for those commands may differ so directory structure is a little different okay where on linux where on linux you have home login name in bsd as another user i don't remember i should know that because i did do some terminal stuff in my router but i can't remember off the top Greetings, Bads TM. How's it going there? Same guy who linked your video to Brave Discord. How's it going there? Have you tried HookTube site? No, I have not. Let me look that up real quick. Share YouTube videos without giving them views. Bypass country blocks and age restrictions. Hmm. Currently running Linux Mint 18. I mean, Linux Mint 18 is going to be supported for a few more years yet. So you're fine if you want to stay on 18. William Nellis is using BSD. Good, BSD. Can you answer that question above? Where is the uh, user, uh, uh, home user login at? All right. I think we're running low in our, in our comments here. So we've been on for about an hour. So I might jump off here shortly. See if there's any more final comment names. In the meantime, we can we should call for some kitties. Oh, kitties! Oh boy, Houston, we got a double catter. We got a double catter, Houston. Got ourselves a double catter. Yes, we do. You can come up. There you go. I guess he got that one. You. Oh. <laughs> All right. There you go. Come on, girl. And we got one more. Come on, dude. Give them the prettier side of you. There you go. That's it, man. You got your three. You got your three. Now she needs her third one. Yeah, here. Come on. Come on. Are the finger looking good? Yeah. He just likes to get every last crumb, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh. 
Alright, yo. Roar. Is that good? Is that good? Is it? Yeah? Is that good? What do you think? Do you want to go now? Want to say hi to peoples? Hello, peoples. How are you, peoples? Yeah. All right. Uh oh, we almost had a cat fight. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Who oh, no, knows? Too late. Use LTS kernel. My build does have a later one. However, I'm going back to LTS for the next build. Um, there's nothing left to say. I find the apt answer. I will post the commands of the future video. Uh, gotta go. See you later. Hey, pizza. Pizza, pizza. Just ordered seven products off of eBay. My good or smash series. Only 15 bucks for all of it. Nice. Look at your good or smash feeds. Yeah, okay. Yeah, check out Pizza Love and Nerd's channel. He's got some good stuff over there. All right, do you think Debian is better than Ubuntu just because it offers slightly more stability, or is there more to the story? Um, Ubuntu is going to have a little bit more compatibility um, than uh, than Debian, but uh, I mean, you can fix it in Debian. It's just easier to fix Ubuntu. Ubuntu is an easier, more user-friendly type system. Uh, than Debian is. Um, but Debian is, um, I think Debian probably is more stable. Once you get everything working right, Debian will be more stable for you. <clears throat> yeah, different goals, free software, community-based versus a company. Yep. <clears throat> Save Saver smash. There you go. <clears throat> We'll have time to review some BSD for desktop users. Mm -hmm. I'll think about it. <clears throat> BSD, yeah, BSD is great for the router with the exception it doesn't support uh, a lot of wireless configuration. So you always have to run an extra wireless access point. And that in and of itself is proving a problematic thing in our day and age where almost every wireless access point you have to have a a app downloaded from the Google Play Store in order to configure. Huh? Yeah, stupidity. Uh, so no, I'm using an old router as my wireless access point. All right, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap this guy up. We just uh, crossed one hour's worth of time, so we'll go ahead and, uh, and jump off here. So thanks for hanging out, everyone. We will catch you guys later. We should have an outdoor philosophy published tomorrow. Um, and uh, back to the top fives next week, and I have a, an ongoing list of those. Uh, we're more comments coming in. Uh, for horrible Windows 10 upgrade experience, I switched to Mint. I do a lot of Blender work, and renders are so much faster. Thanks for channel and advice. Thank you very much, Eric. And uh, good. Awesome. Highly Linux, Debian, and such. Also in the Microsoft Store. Yeah, as is Fedora and OpenSUSE, and, you know, they're all in the Microsoft Store. Greetings. Hello, Total OS today. Heads up, Ubuntu 1804 telemetry report is posted on their blog. Interesting. Yeah, I, uh, I got a link to that, and uh, I want to have a look at that uh, in detail. Um, but yeah, somebody sent, sent me a link to that. Um, in fact, you know what? Maybe that's something we can do before I wrap this up. Let me, let me, was that in my email? I think I got that in my in inbox. So let me double check that real quick. <clears throat> yeah, that's something we can look at before we close up. So we'll stick around a little bit longer, I guess. Um, because I, I, I got the link, I opened it up, but I didn't actually get in there and, and look, a lo look at a lot of it.
Okay. All right, so here we are. Um, first announce our intention to ask users to provide basic, not personally identifiable system information back in February. Since then, we built the Ubuntu report tool integrated into Ubuntu 18.04 initial setup tool. You can see an example of data being collected on report GitHub page. At first login, users are asked if they'd like to send information gathered and can preview the data if they wish. We're asking for this data in order to build a better picture about our user base and indeed the user base of any other distro that would be get like to get involved. With this data, we can understand typical hardware setups to ensure we are aligned with the hardware. We also get good insight to which translations are more most important and where people in the world are using Ubuntu. All of that means decisions we make for Ubuntu desktop and will benefit all our users. <clears throat> okay, so 67% of people opted in. Okay, average installation time in minutes. So it's about 17 minutes is the average installation time. Average install of Debian desktop uh, takes about 18 minutes. Some machines out there can install a full desktop in eight. Well, 18 is... Uh, faster than many OS, other OS, still others, okay. Fresh uninstalls versus upgrades. Number of people upgrading an existing Ubuntu is about a quarter of those who are installing it from scratch, given that we only start prompting for the upgrade and since the point one release is out, scheduled for July, that's not surprising. So we see that 28% of people auto log in, 53.8% of people Let's see, restricted add-ons, down, okay, 90% updated uh, downloads, 53% of people did not uh, opt for the extra add-ons, which is your codecs and things. Newly introduced minimal install option is being used by a little over 15% of, of users. This is brand new option, was already attracting considerable fan base. <clears throat> Other installer options show that nearly everyone chooses to download software updates during install. Over half the installs include restricted add-ons, 28% uh, for those. Number of CPUs, CPU count one. Now, let me tell you what this means, guys. Most of these installs are in a virtual box. Because <laughs> most CPUs in your computers are not single core these days. Um, but your default installation in a virtual box, unless you go in and toggle your settings like I do, um, uh, it was, uh, uh, they set it as one. <clears throat> okay, partitioning, erase device install, manual, install alongside, erase. Full HD 1080p is the most popular, followed by 1366 by 768, which, by the way, that's a good, um, you will get both of these in a virtual box install. Uh, HI, DPI, and 4K are not yet commonplace. RAM usage. So 4 and 8 are the most common RAM usages. Location. So this is based on time zone, not IP. <clears throat> Be skewed by people using defaults during installation. Brazil, China, and Russia are also users of Ubuntu. We literally have people all over the globe. So that is what the basic input data is. So does this change my view or opinion about um, the data collection? The answer is no, it does not. Um, and the reason is that this is a pretty collected information, they still have a fingerprint of individual computers. And if PopCon is turned on, that actually can link things back to an individual fingerprint on an individual device. These are all big deal concerns. And I still believe that this is a slippery slope down a direction. Um, I don't see a reason they absolutely have to have this information. Because you can get glean the exact same issues off of forums and probably do it without a dragnet of collecting other stuff. That's my thought on it. So what do you guys think? You're welcome to disagree. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, should be interesting. I'd personally never use Ubuntu. This is still interesting. There's a must-have extension for Chrome and Firefox called Dark Router. It adds a dark theme to every website. I literally cannot live without it. <laughs> uh, all statistics are in percentage, yeah. Some users installed with one gig of RAM. Nuts, I'm sorry. That's not good. Third most popular screen resolution is 800 by 600, which again tells VirtualBox. Yep. Lots of VirtualBox installs, I'm sure. Now, Ubuntu Flagship and Ubuntu Mate, other flavors don't have it out of the box, but feel free to install it if you want. How long has Debian been around? Yeah, long time. Some people say 98, some people say 93. I'm not sure. We'd have to go look it up. 93. Okay, 93. All right. So we have consensus. All right. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap this up here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, close out the stream. So we will catch you guys later. Have yourselves a... Uh, a wonderful afternoon and we'll catch you next live stream should probably be Wednesday I think so there'll be some pre-recorded videos between now and then so check those out have yourselves a wonderful afternoon and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux I guess before I go don't forget to check out the support sites uh, switch linux.com forward slash support um, you can get some t-shirts and things at shop.switch to linux.com and don't forget to check out the patreon page Patreon.com forward slash Tom M. So thanks for hanging out, folks, and we will catch you later.